steam locomotive 2716 has been preserved. She rests quietly, her power silenced by the slow, inevitable march of progress. You can almost imagine what it was like just a few generations ago when these mighty machines formed the backbone of American transportation. You can almost hear the lonesome whistle blow. You can nearly feel the ground shake as 400 tons of steel rumbles by. You can almost travel to the past. In 2016, the past is coming rumbling back. During World War II, the Chesapeake and Ohio Railway was a key link for transporting freight from America's heartland and Appalachian coal fields for transport abroad. The CNO was also a major carrier of America's most precious commodity, our troops. It was, uh, it was always something to see the trains come in, but it was also something to see people from all over the country, all over the state, and perhaps even all over the world, who came to the depots to catch a train to somewhere or to get off a train coming from somewhere, wherever that might have been. Um, those were days that uh, uh, one does not forget, and those are days that, that I cherish in my childhood memories because uh, not only was it about the railroad, but it was about the people that the railroad served and the, and the people who served the railroad. To help move the increased wartime traffic, the CNO ordered some of the most modern and versatile steam locomotives ever built. The result? The 2700 class K4 Canaws. The Big Mikes, as their crews called them, were immediate hits. Their ability to start heavy trains, deal with tough terrain, and operate at mile a minute speed made them some of the most popular locomotives that the CNO ever owned. These locomotives were designed for dual service, both passenger service and freight service, uh, and performed very well. These locomotives were very, very powerful. They could pull heavy trains, of uh, uh, coal hoppers. They could be just as at home pulling a 12 or 13 car passenger train, or even a 20-some car derby special to the Kentucky Derby. A total of 90 canals were built and 2716 was the 17th in the company's first order of 40 locomotives. She was born in Schenectady, New York, at the American Locomotive Company in December 1943, and immediately began her duties operating out of Russell, Kentucky. After only a few years of service, more cost-effective diesel electrics began replacing steam locomotives. Slowly, the K4s were retired, sold, and scrapped. Only a few CNO steam engines were saved, and 2716 was one of the lucky ones. The engine was slated for disposal, but because she was still in good condition, she was donated to the Kentucky Railway Museum in spring of 1959. After 19 years of static display, the engine was given a brief reprieve when she was leased by the Southern Railway and partially rebuilt for operation, redecorated as Southern 2716 by master mechanic Bill Purdy. 2716 thrilled the public, pulling excursions for several months in 1981 and 1982. Fortunately, at that time, with our connection, with a good connection with the Southern, Mr. Purdy was looking for a compromise engine to take the place of uh, T&P 610 and Canadian Pacific Royal Hudson 2839. The Hudson would pull a small amount of cars and could pull them real fast. The, the 610 could pull a lot of cars but couldn't pull them fast. So this was a perfect compromise engine with the size and the weight and the drivers and the power that it had being a super power locomotive. And Mr. Purdy did a marvelous job restoring it. Mr. 
Mr. Purdy and his crew rebuilt it and it came out. And when I got on it and saw it, I mean, it was the real deal. I mean, it was like Big Emma reincarnated. It was incredible. It was just absolutely incredible. And uh, JJC, the superintendent, was pacing, in, pacing us in his car. He took us down there. And I remember he picked up the radio and he knew Bill really well. He said, Bill, she's as graceful as a swan. I leaned over and told Kenny, I said, don't repeat this, but I said, this is better than sex. <laughs> Suffering minor mechanical problems, 2716 was silently stored for the next 13 years until she was once again given another chance. When 611 and 1218 came in, with the merger that created Norfolk Southern Corporation, 2716 became surplus and sat in the shop there, at least it was enclosed for like 11 years, and was never put back into service. There was nothing ever else done to it. So we were fortunate that it stayed inside, but they just they kept maintaining the lease just in case they ever did need it. And when they closed uh, operations, ceased operations in 1994, we were fortunate that Tom Stevens and the group at Fort Wayne, Indiana were interested in picking up the lease, and it ended up there and ran at uh, Logansport, Indiana in 1996. <laughs> It was, uh, it was like living a dream. It was like the culmination of a dream. And so that was, the, that was the highlight of my 17 years in transportation was the one weekend that I got to run this engine finally, which had been like my personal project all these years. I hope the third time's the charm. It's, it's always been our dream to, to once again have it in service, but uh, we've just been hoping for the right combination of people uh, or organization to come along that could, could pull it off. I guess the genesis of my idea was back in 93 when the Fort Wayne group took 765 and dressed it up as a CNO Canal. And I rode behind that engine three times, I think, that fall. I was 15 years old and I was really intrigued. So I was interested, I said to myself, um, it would really be cool if one day we could see one of these things running in CNO garb. Recently, I had seen it and talked to some people about an idea that I had for getting it running. The people that I talked to were fairly close to me that I knew pretty well and knew that were uh, very competent, not only railroad people, but business people. To my surprise, everybody that I mentioned it to said, yeah, that's a great idea, Let's, uh, what, how can I get involved? I reached out to Jason Sapchinski, who is now in our group, in our founders group. Uh, that's how I originally approached him, was to say, hey, well, can you contract some work to come do an inspection on the 2716? He said, absolutely, that's a great idea, how can I get involved? In November, Kish co-founding members, along with members of the museum, performed a three-day inspection on the veteran engine. What they found was remarkable. When I first heard about this locomotive, there were rumors about one mechanical boondoggle condition or another, whether it's the firebox is shot and the whole thing needs to be replaced, or the machinery is destroyed to the spring rigging is, is, is just destroyed. Well, none of these things were true. You know, the, the locomotive, as a matter of fact, is in better shape in many respects than most locomotives that are in service today. In early 2016, Kishko signed a long-term lease with the Kentucky Railway Museum with the intent to restore and eventually run the engine. Though she is in excellent overall shape, initial estimates put the restoration costs at 800,000 to 1.3 million dollars. In 2016, the future again looks bright for 2716, but she needs your help. Please consider making a donation to the Kentucky Steam Heritage Corporation and visit 2716.org for more details. Your tax-deductible contribution will go directly to the restoration effort. You can also help by volunteering to work on this magnificent locomotive. With your support, 
this fine example of American ingenuity can once again get a new lease on steam. It's always been our dream to, to once again have it in service. I hope the third time's the charm.